Hey, what's going on? I want to welcome you to Heartland today. Hey, happy Father's happy Day. Happy Father's Day. Right to all of our men in the house here at Wanata and North Judson, here at Valpo. Yep. Online, yep. you're watching. What all about the Westville? Men, Westville. NPH. NPH. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Now, listen, you got to pay attention to this. Come on here at Valpo. You want to pay attention today. Yep. We are giving away a $50. Home Depot card, right. which, hello, what man doesn't love Home Depot? I need it. Right? And we're giving away a $50 ticket to our 2011 yep. Harley-Davidson V-Rod giveaway. How do they, as men today, how do they get an opportunity to be able to win that stuff today, Pastor John? We need you to check in with us, all right? Mm -hmm. Our text-in number is 201-975-5870. Right. Yes. Text us your name first and last name okay. and text us where you're watching from so valpo north judson uh -huh. wanata online online let right. us know where you're watching from and we will have a winner for both our valpo online and then our wanata and our north judson absolutely so we need you to text that number yep. again your name and your location if you miss the location guess what, what? we rip it up and we don't get no we Whoa. won't do that but we do need you to text your name and your location. We're going to give away a $50 Home Depot card. That's right. A chance to win our 2011 V-Rod Harley Davidson motorcycle. Probably which, one of the nicest Father's Day gifts that somebody could get is a, a Harley. Who right? wouldn't a want a Harley? So you'd have a chance to do that. Now listen, we're not giving away the bike today uh, because what we're doing, we yeah. are giving that away hopefully by July 4th. That yeah. is our goal. We're only doing 400 tickets. Today gets you one of those. But yeah. hey, if they want to get more tickets for that, Pastor John, how do they do that? If they so, wanna... so starting this week, we are doing you buy three, okay. you get one ticket for free. So you get four for the price of three so for, you as buy far as three, entries go. You yes. get one free. Yep, that absolutely. Rhymes. Did you come up with that? I did. What That's do you think? Good. You so buy listen, three, get one free. If you've already bought three or you've already bought tickets, we've already gone back and we've we've added that fourth extra. Absolutely. So so we're taking care of you. We're excited. And again, once we hit 400, that V-Rod is going to be going to somebody. We're ready to bless somebody with that yes. motorcycle. It's an incredible bike. Yes. I'm ready for so it. So come on, I'm man. ready to win it. Wherever you're at, if you're at North Judson, yep. you're at Wanata, yep. you're online, whatever location That's you're right. at, you're here in Valpo in-house. Come on, text We got them. We got the leaves right now the checking in. We got Bridget Watts checking in. For come on. Her. That's right. There we go. So make sure you check in. 201-975-5870. Make sure you're checking in. We're going to give it away today. The gift card, the gift you're going card to get today. that today, and you get an opportunity for that 2011 V-Rod. That is a beautiful bike. Can we show the picture one more time? Let's see it. Come on, online. You can see it right here at Valpo. Are they going to show you the picture? Show that motorcycle imagine one it. time. Imagine it. It's really cool. No, you, you just can't get... imagine it. I want to see the it's pictures. So... There it is. Oh. Come on. There it is. Right there. I was 2011 gonna... V-Rod muscle bike. I was going to draw one for him real no, quick. No, I'm glad you didn't do that. So listen, text in right now. You still yep. got a minute. We got about a minute before service starts. Yep. We're excited to have you here on this Father's That's right. Day weekend. It's going to be a good day. We'll get going on the stage in just a minute. Welcome to Heartland Christian Center today. Would you stand on your feet? Come on, sing with us. Risen, he's risen, forever glorified. Risen, he's risen, King Jesus, King Jesus is alive. Come on, church, let's
church wherever you're at would you just raise your hands with us come on let's sing who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the lord almighty come on we know there's no one who can stop the lord almighty who can stop the lord that you conquered everything, Father. So we just worship you. Come on, church, at the sound of the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing peace. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. All the seed is still, the raging beat is still, every day, at your name, come on, say, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence me. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, the silence we hear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your name is light that the shadow. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive and forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. I say, Your name is alive and the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be 
This one more time. Your name is a lie that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a lie forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Come on, church, let's that voice. Your Come on, come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, would you, would you just bow your heads? Father, we thank you, Lord. There is no other name, Father. There is no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved. It's the name of Jesus. Lord, you are our Savior. You're our Redeemer. You're the lifter of our heads today. Father, we pray, Lord, today for our nation. We pray, Father God, for our communities and our families. Lord, we ask you today as we lift up our eyes, Lord, to you today. Lord, as we look beyond all that man can do, God, we look to you. Father, we thank you that you're leading us in the triumph. You're leading us in the victory. But Lord, we pray for those who are struggling right now. We, we pray for those that are still navigating through all the sickness and all the things that's happening in our culture today. God, you're greater than that. Lord, would you show yourself strong? Lord, show yourself mighty today. Lord, we pray for the men of America. God, our culture today is suffering from an absence of fatherhood. Our culture was suffering today, Father God, for fathers being emotionally or physically absent from homes and families. And we pray for men today, God. We pray for men to rise up, God, and live their life in the victory that Christ has called them to live. Lord, we pray for those single moms. We pray for those moms who are having, not by choice, many times, by God, by necessity, having to be both father and mother. We pray for them today, God. We are mindful of the stresses that they encounter emotionally and, Lord, physically and financially. We ask your sovereign grace and power to be upon these moms and these dads today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Come on. Come on. Would you give the Lord a good hand clap? <laughs> hey, before you're seated, would you find somebody to give them an air high five if you don't want to touch them, if they're not family members? And just say, Hey, it's great. It's great to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hey, we just want to welcome you here. I am so glad that you've joined us, our second service. I want to welcome all of our online audiences watching Westville campus, our NPH campus, our North Judson, our Wanita campus. Come on, would you give all of our campuses a real good hand clap? Let them know that we appreciate them being here with us. And I'm glad you're here, man. It's an exciting day. It's Father's Day, and we're excited. You know, one of the unique things that we do at Heartland, uh, particularly 
We often do it on Father's Day, sometimes Mother's Day, but it is the dedication of children. And we often have people ask us, well, how come we don't do a child baptism? And it's very simple. It's not in the Bible, so we don't do it. But we do child dedication. It has nothing to do with salvation. It has everything to do with the dedication of those parents and that child back to a sovereign God. And at Heartland, we believe, you know, the children are a gift of God. And so many times when we have, and we've been blessed uh, in 2020, 2019, new, new families, we have more families. Have, I love it. You know, you, you, have to, you have to really have a lot of faith to want to have children in 2020. <laughs> Come on. You, you have to have a lot of trust in God because you, you hear people say, well, why in the world would you bring a child into this world right now? I'll tell you why. Because God said, continue to occupy and multiply until he comes. Amen? Come on. And we need to do that. We need to understand that. And, you know, child dedication is, is, that, is that opportunity for parents to make a public commitment to God, to the church family, and to their own family that provides them the opportunity that they have a desire to, to lead that child, lead those children into a spiritual growth with Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we're excited about that, to be able to do that today. Again, and I was talking to someone last week to just remind you, you know, ceremony has nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with dedication. Back in the Old Testament, when Hannah w was desiring a child, she prayed to God, and then she made a commitment. She said, Lord, when you give me that child, I'm going to give him back to you. Psalms 127 and 3 said that, said that sons and daughters are an inheritance from the Lord and children are a reward to Him. And you know, God, God gives us in, in His great mercy and His goodness, He gives us the awesome responsibility as parents to care for our children. But also there's this great privilege that we enjoy for not, uh, to be able to enjoy our kids. And that's what it's about today. So today... We, have, we, have, we had several, and there's a couple that had to counsel, but I think we have four of our families today that's going to dedicate their children. So, Miss Rhonda, we're going to see some pictures up here. And when you see your picture and your child's name, would you come, parents, grandparents, if you want to bring them with you, and just come and stand up front, and let's get ready to honor the Lord this morning. Amen? So we'll get some pictures. There we go. Our first baby is going to be June Parabire. Her parents' name is Joe and Jen Parabire. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Our next baby. Yeah, you're yeah, right there. Good. It's, it's Dallas Williams. Her parents is Matthew and Austin Williams. Amen. Awesome. Wow. Josephine Mehut. Parents is Josh and Joy Mehut. Amen. Our next child is Elena Mance. Parents is Chris and Lindsay Mance. Right there. Awesome. Wow. Isn't this awesome? Come on, would you give you give all of these parents a great hand clap? It's incredible. I think this is the first time we did all girls. All girls right now. We have no boys. All girls. What is this? They, you know, there is an Old Testament verse that says in the last days that seven women will take a hold of one man. I mean, so maybe. Now, I don't know what that means. Ah, oh, but wow, listen. It, it's so awesome. Hey, thank you, parents. Thank you for wanting to, to have this recognition. And this time, when your child is, is coming in this, has just come in this world, that you desire to say, Lord, I recognize what a great gift that you've given me. I want to remind you, the parents, there, there's four elements that when it comes to child dedication, that's important to remember. The first one is that you're coming today before God and your family and all these witnesses, and, and you're confirming your love to God. 
You're confirming your recognition that you understand that God is the giver of life, and He gave you life, and then He gave you the ability to be part of another life. So you're confirming God's love that you have for Him and He has for you. Secondly, it's a clarification of ownership. You know what? You are steward of these little children. You're steward. You're, you're, you don't own them. God gave you the privilege. He's loaned them to you for a season to be able to grow them up in the grace and the goodness of God. And thirdly, it's, it's about claiming the plan of God and the promises of God in their life. God has a purpose and a plan for every one of these children. I know we look at them right now and we see the smallness and we, we try to figure out their hands and, and we try to look at, you know, what, imagine well, what are they going to grow up, what are they going to be. But let me tell you, God already has a purpose. He already has a plan for them. He has something that he wants to do. And fourthly, it's about your commitment that you want to help them know God's purpose and plan in their life. You know, kids, children have to be led. Parents are, are the first teachers. Now, they'll grow up, Lord willing, they'll go to school. But let me tell you, parents, dads, mom, you're the first teachers of this child. And you're the ones that get to be able to, to help make a commitment that you want to help them know God's purpose in God's plan. So here's what I want to ask you. Before God and these witnesses, and your answer, we do at the very end. By coming forward before God and His people today, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord? Do you vow by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide a Christian home of love and peace, to raise them in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline, and to encourage them to one day trust Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. And your answer is, we do. We do. Amen. Hey, Miss Rhonda is going to come. And today, we're going to present each child and each family with, with three flowers. The first flower is a white flower that represents the mother's purity and sanctity of motherhood. The second red flower represents the father's courage and strength in the blood relationship and then the third flower represents the budding rose of that child that that life is about to unfold then each child is going to be given hopefully their very first bible the bible represents that may the word of god always be a light under their pathway and a lamp under their feet amen so here's what i want to do i want to I want to walk by and I'm going to pray for each child and, and have some time. Hey, parent, all of you, would you just bow your heads with me? And would you, uh, would you just take this moment to help us in recognition and pray for these children today? Amen. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, I...
We pray your blessing over every one of these families, God. Divine protection over all of them as they go in, as they come out today. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Amen. Would you give the Lord a good hand clap? Awesome. What great families. Amen. Hey, after service, you guys are free to come back up and get some pictures. Uh, we, we've got a few of you. You may go back and, and be seated now if you would. Hey, thank you so much. Amen. Wow, what, what a great day. John, we're going to get ready to go for you for a second because we still, we got a Father's Day card we want to give away this morning, right? Come on. Thanks, Pastor. Let's give it up one more time for all our families and the child dedication. I just want to remind you real quick, we do have a Father's Day giveaway that we want to make sure everybody has a chance to be a part of. We're giving away a $50 Home Depot gift card to every single person at one of our physical locations, Wanata, Valpo, North Judson, as well as if you win, you're going to be getting your name entered into the drawing for our V-Rod motorcycle giveaway. So the way that you do that is simple. You just text in your name and where you're watching from, Valpo, North Judson. Judson, Wanata, or online to 201-975-5870. I see them come in. I see Trey over at Wanata. I see Alan at Wanata. I see Denzel at North Judson. We see them coming in online and at Valpo. You still have time, but do not miss out. And so we're going to get ready to jump right back in to a time of worship. And as we get ready to do that, we just want to thank you here at Heartland yeah. for everything that you do, everything that you make possible through your generosity and through your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor John. Listen, God's just been doing some amazing things. We had our second service at Full Throttle Thursday night. It's amazing. We had about six or seven very first-time guests over there. Come on. It's amazing. And, and let, me, let me tell you, there was one, one a lady showed up. Now, she didn't ride in, but she showed up because you don't have to ride a motorcycle to come to Full Throttle but she come, and, she, and here's what she said. It's been years. I'd seen her. She had visited here a couple, a few times. She told me, and Sister Ronna, she had tears flowing down. She said, you know what? When this church went up for sale, I started driving by here praying, Lord, number one, let it sail to another church. And secondly, let there be a spirit-filled Pentecostal church come into this building. And she said, when I heard that Heartland had bought that building, she said, I would have been so excited. She was there Thursday night. Her husband's supposed to be back with her next week. It's just amazing how God's timing and what God is doing. You know, now you're sitting in a church, listen, that has impact, that we're, we're doing everything we can to make an impact in communities. We're one church in seven locations now. Come on, isn't that amazing? Come on, give them a one church in seven locations. Hey, we're able to do it through your stewardship and your faithfulness. Would you stand? And let me, let me just pray a blessing. Some of you have already given online. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you an opportunity today to come and just bring your offering, put it in the offering bucket. Hey, if you're a first-time guest here today, we want to welcome you. And there's a little card right in the seat in front of you. It takes you about 120 seconds to fill it out. At some point this morning, would you fill it out? Just leave it on your seat, or you can drop it by the guest services when you get ready to leave today. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing at Heartland. Thank you for our family. Thank you again, Father, for just what you're, the, you're doing, the life that you're giving this church. Thank you for the faith and the faithfulness of our people. All of those that's watching online today, our North Judson, our Wanata campuses, God, we're praying for Westfield. Lord, we continue to take DVDs in there. We're praying for our NPH, Lord, location there in Crown Point. We're praying for the staff and all those there, Lord, as they get to log on uh, and, and watch still online at times. Father, we ask you, God, to continue to use this church to be a light that shines and to be salt that seasons in people's lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. Hey, as they continue to worship, would you come bring your tithe and your offering today? God bless you. How can I say it is well when my voice can barely speak? How 
How can I sing you a song in the midst of suffering? Jesus, will you meet me here? Let your peace wash over me. Cause I need you now more than ever. Teach my soul to sing. My God is still in control. And still he reigns on his throne. Though mountains may tremble and sea billows roll, I'll sing it is well with my soul. My God is still Come on, church, just think about these words today. You have not left me alone, though the world has let me down. All of my sorrow and pain, I will trade it for a crown. Come on, so we say, thank you for staying with me. When the night was closing in, whatever my life, you are still God, I will sing again. My God is still in control, and still He reigns on His throne. Though mountains may tremble and sea billows, I'll sing it is well with my soul. My God is feeling control. Come on, church, with confidence today. No matter what's going on, we can sing this and declare. It is well. Come on, as you stand there, come on, can you raise your hands this morning? And come on, God, we thank you for that, Lord, today. That, God, you are in control of our life. God, you are in control of, Lord, situations and circumstances this morning. And so, God, today we turn our focus, God, and we turn our attention to you, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord, that you are still on the throne. Thank you, God, that you are in control. Lord, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Come on, can you put your hands together one time for Jesus this morning again? Come on. Hey, you can go ahead and grab your seat this morning. Thank you, worship team. Want to welcome all of you here today at Valpo. Want to welcome all of you again at Westville, North Judson, uh, NPH, Wanata, online watching all over the country and in the world. Come on, put your hands together one more time so they can hear you. Make some noise for them as we are all here today on this beautiful Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all my men. Come on, men. Yeah, your wife threatens you not make noise in public. I see who lets uh, 
Uh, but it's happy Father's Day to all of you today. An exciting day to be here. It's Father's Day. It's also Pastor Phil and Sister Rhonda's 46th anniversary today. 46 years. She's put up with him. Come on. No, I'm joking. I also want to uh, just welcome my mamaw from Alabama who is here. My mamaw is here. Pastor Phil's mom. She's here hanging out with us for a little bit and uh, always encouraging us, man, and also keeping us in line. So don't mess around while Mamaw's here. We'll send you right to Mamaw. She'll take care of you. And uh, so I want to welcome all of you again. Hey, open your Bibles this morning to James chapter 4. Oh, you could open your worship God as well. We're getting ready to go there. James chapter 4 this morning. If you don't have a Bible, maybe you got a smart device, a smartphone, you can download version. It's a free Bible app. You can follow along there. Our notes are there as well. James chapter 4 this morning as we continue our series on great prayers. We're going to look at a text this morning simply entitled our message, Consider the Source. Consider the Source. I would like to kind of level the playing ground for us this morning and kind of just put us all at ease before we look at our text, can we just all raise our right hand, kind of so we could just kind of all feel good about ourselves this morning, and just, I want you to just say this with me. I have a problem, and it is my ego. Yeah, there you go. Put your hand down. Yeah, I know. It hurts some of you to say that. I know. We all got ego problems. Come on, amen. Ask my wife. I got an ego problem. If you don't think you got an ego problem, when's the last time you said, I'm sorry? Come on, it's hard to say that. Two times this week I had to say I'm sorry. I think I would have uh, much rather ran a mile than had to say I'm sorry. And I hate running, by the way. I hate running. Consider the source. James chapter 4 is where we're going to go this morning. And uh, he writes to us, James writes in verse 1. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Come on, men. You ever asked your wife that question? Why are we even arguing right now? Don't know what's going on. Don't they come from... Your desire that battles within you. You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Makes sense, right? We would go to the right source. We could probably get what we have. But he takes us a step further in verse 3. He says, but when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with all the wrong motives. When you ever had your kid come to you dirty with some wrong motives, being super nice, and you know exactly quickly what do you want. You're being too nice right now. He says, that's kind of how we are. Y'all's kids don't do that. Y'all kids are perfect. All right, pray for my kids then. I can, I can see quickly through their motives. I'm, I can know when something's up. He says, we're the same way. When we ask, we don't receive because it's with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. We're going to need some prayer today. Let's pray. God, thank you today, Lord, for your word. God, thank you, Lord, today on this Father's Day as we celebrate men all over this country and all over this city and in our church. God, as we go to our text this morning, God, I pray that you would open our eyes, our hearts, our ears, our mind to what it is you have for us today. God, let us Lord, leave different than how when we walked in those buildings today. God, let us leave different than how we were when we clicked on this morning to join online. God, I, praise that, I pray that you would illuminate, God, your word to us this morning. God, you would challenge and change every one of us, including myself, in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. amen. Consider the source. James writes to us this morning on, on, on some things that we know probably what it's all about. Now, if I could kind of put us all on the same ground this morning, I put the definition in your notes this morning. You can write it down. What is a source? A source is simply this, anything or place from which something comes. It's some, anything or place which something comes from. It arises or is obtained. It's, it's origin. That's what a source is. It's origin. And James kind of kicks us off this morning and he takes us in chapter 4, and he starts off with this rhetorical question, right? You ever asked a rhetorical question before that you already know the answer to? Like, you look at your kids, you're like, you want me to ground you and take your phone away? No, they know the answer. No, I do not want you to do that. Hey, you want me to knock you out in the next week? No, Dad, I would not. You've never had to ask your kid that question. All right. 
You know, you've, you've asked a rhetorical question before because you know the answer to it. And kind of James, he asked that type of question. He says, what causes fights and, and quarrels among you? He says, where do these fights that happen in our life, where do these quarrels that happen in our life, where does this struggle come from that we all experience? And, and he answers his own question and he says, the, these struggles come from this desire, this battle that happens inside of us. This conflict that we all experience, it comes out of this inner struggle. Come on, did you have that struggle this week? That this inner battle that we all fight, and, and from this inner struggle, he begins to lay out in verse 2, from this inner battle that we have, he, he shows us the, 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 the repercussions of that inner struggle. He, he shows us really the byproduct of the struggle. He says, listen, you want it, you don't know how to get it. So there's this battle, there's this conflict. You want it and, and, and you don't have it, so you kill, you covet, and you cannot get it, so you quarrel and, and you fight. And so what James is showing us, he's showing us this byproduct of really the source of an issue. I'll give you an everyday example. It's oftentimes our frustration, many times in life, is at the wrong things. Many times the frustrations that we experience and we see we get frustrated at the byproduct of what life brings. For example, what we see in our country right now, the unrest, the uneasiness, the tension, it's the byproduct. You turn on the news, you see the byproduct of an issue. And a lot of times our frustration comes at the byproduct. It comes from, from, the, from, from the things that we see coming from the issue, and really the issue is, is the source, and we want to fix the byproduct, and we don't want to overlook the source. We want to fix the tension, and we want to overlook the heart. Come on. Right, and it really a lot of times we experience the byproduct of the issue that's going on in, in, in every one of us. This is not a Christian, unchristian thing. Every one of us have this struggle. We have this issue, and it's what's going on on the inside. And we get angry, we get upset at the byproduct. Our emotions get turned by the byproduct. I never forget several years ago, I've been here now for a while, and we went to a, a church camp for the first time in Hartford City, Indiana. That's where we take our teenagers to church camp. And I'm a country dude, I grew up in the South, I've grown up in the country, and we go to this campground. I, I wasn't the youth pastor at the time. I was just a youth leader. I'm there, and I'm hanging out. And, like, you play sports, and you do all of this stuff. And so it's lunchtime. We go to the cafeteria, and, and they got this line of, of where you pick up your glass, you know, to get a drink. And then they've got, like, all these fountain drinks and all of this stuff. And I just wanted some water because I was just really thirsty. And uh, so, so I take my cup, and, and I get the water. And as soon as I take it up to my nose, it just smells terrible. Like, it smells like eggs. And I'm like, what in the world is this? I tasted it, and it tasted like eggs. And I got angry. I was like, somebody don't know how to do dishes around here. And I threw the cup down, right? I grabbed another cup. I got the water. And, and, and again, I, I drank it again. I'm like, really? They don't, like, for real, two cups? You can't fix, can't wash two cups? I grabbed another. Y'all, I went through five or six cups while people are sitting there watching me make a fool of myself. And I'm getting angry at the dishwasher because I'm like, clearly, they need to hire somebody who knows how to wash dishes and not... Don't wash dishes in dirty dishwasher, in dirty dishwater. And my, and my youth pastor looked at me at the time. He goes, you can get mad at the cup all you want. The cup is not the issue. It's the water coming out of the fountain that's the issue. I learned about the thing called sulfur and well water. Never experienced it in my life. And in an instant, right, again, and we do the same thing. We get angry at the cup in life. And so we change the cup and we go to a new source. And we, or, I'm sorry, we go to a new cup and so we change the station or we go to another social media uh, platform or we talk to a different friend. And listen, what James is pointing out is we can change the cup all we want. The cup is not the problem. What the problem is, is the source. That's why Proverbs 4.23, it says to guard your heart for it's the wellspring of life. It's what flows out of your life comes from right here. And so he's pointing to us this morning. He says, listen, where does all of the frustration come from? He's getting our eyes off of the byproduct. He's getting our eyes off of the things that we see. And he takes us to verse 2. He says, listen, you do not have because you do not ask God. 
He said, the reason you don't have the things that you desire, the reason that you don't have the things that you want is because you don't ask God. And immediately when I read that, and I'm like, but I ask God for stuff all the time. And he takes it a step further, though, and he goes, no, 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 no. You ask God with the wrong motives. He said, you ask God with the wrong things on the inside. You, you can say it with your mouth, but yet your heart still be off. And he reveals this issue, right? Watch this. You can write this down in your notes. James shows us the issue is not that I need to fix what I want to say, but I need to fix my source. Because we're good at saying the right things. We're good at speaking it out, right? I put it in your notes. It's not so much what happens in the spotlight that exposes our heart, but what happens in secret. See, in the spotlight of my life, when I go to that job, and people are around me. And then when the spotlight is on me, I can say the right things. When, when I'm out in the community, I can, I can say the right things. When, when I'm in conversations, I can say the right things. But what James does, he turns the spotlight on us. And he says, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's not the external stuff. It's not the cup. It's not that you don't ask. He says you ask with the wrong motives. You need to adjust and consider the source. He says what we look at, he says the, the things that we see in life, the frustrations that we feel. Again, hear me this morning. That's just the byproducts of what we see. And the byproducts is, of what we see in it is really just the issue with a source in our life. Look at the person next to you. Say, consider your source. Can I take you to another story? Can I take you a step further? Because you're looking at me all crazy. You don't like James. So let me take you to Matthew chapter 19. We see this story of this young man. If you've ever read this story in your Bible, it says the rich young ruler. This young man is very wealthy. This young man is very prestigious. This young man has worked hard. Theologians say that this young man is someone who's worked hard for everything he has. He's not just like some spoiled kid that mommy and daddy has like passed something dad. But this young man is a prestigious man in the community. He's worked hard for everything that he has. He's a ruler. He's been entrusted with some things. And in Matthew chapter 16, or in chapter 19, verse 16, we see that he has an encounter with Jesus. And he comes to him in verse 16, and look what it says. It says, just then a man came up to Jesus and asked... Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? How many of you think that's a good question? Not a bad question at all, right? Come on, raise your hand. Good question, right? What must I do to get eternal life? Verse 17, why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter, if you want to enter keep the commandments. Which ones, he inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 20, he says, all of these I have kept. Which one do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me and look at verse 22. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Consider the source. James points out to us some things in our life, and Jesus has an encounter with this young man that, that we see several things. If I could just kind of unpack this for you this morning. The first thing we see in Matthew chapter 19 is we see the request. He says in verse 16, he says, teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? What a great request. Nothing wrong with that request at all. He didn't say, Jesus, what must I do to get more money? He didn't say, Jesus, what must I do to get more fame? Jesus, what must I do to get eternal life? And, and this is what I've come to understand in, in my life, the, the needs in my life are never the problem. It's how I choose to meet those needs that can be an issue. Listen, every one of us this morning came in with some requests. Your requests look a little bit different than mine. You're watching online. Your requests look a little bit different than maybe the campus host. You're at North Judson. But all of us at Wanata, all of us have requests. Some of you in this place, maybe your request is like, man, I just, I just want to have more joy in my life. Great request. Man, if I could just, Pastor Matt, if God would just grant me anything, 
Oh, I would just have more peace in my marriage. Great request. Some of you single people is like, if I could just get a relationship. Nobody single wants to acknowledge that. That's all right. They never do. If I could just find the right man, if I could just find the right woman and, and just get married, and then I can be up there one day on Father's Day and dedicate a baby or four of them or five of them. I don't know how many. Right? We have all of these requests, and all of these requests are, are good things. If I could just, Pastor Matt, if I could just be more financially stable. It's a good, good request. Man, I, I tell you, Pastor Matt, what this country needs. We, we need racial equality. Great request. We, 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 need, we need everyone to come together. We need racial unity. Phenomenal request. I need some well-behaved kids. Jesus, that's a great request. Right? I need my wife and I to get along better. Great request. And we see this young man. The request was not the problem. And again, the needs in my life, when we look at those things, the requests that I have, James is showing us the requests that we have, the desires that we have, they're, they're natural. They're even God-given in our life. And, 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 but here's the problem. We don't know how to obtain them in our own power. And in our own power, we don't know how to get to them. As a matter of fact, I, I said it like this. You can jot this down. In my own strength, all I will do is I will meet legitimate needs in an illegitimate way. Oh, y'all are quiet this morning. Let me talk to this side of the room, and I'll ignore you for a second. We'll see if you help me out. I'll give you an example. I, I see people who are single all the time, right? And we'll, we'll take the request of a relationship. If I could just find the right relationship. And so it's a legitimate need, right? And, and so maybe instead of waiting for that right person to come along, they'll, they'll jump from relationship to relationship, and they'll cause more heartache and more harm than they ever would have done if they would have just waited and, and maybe even prepared themselves and be the right person before they ever get the right person. That's a whole message right there. I could preach that all day. And if they would just be the right woman and be the right man of God, and wait and prepare themselves. But financially, we have this request, right? And, and like, God, I have this desire and this request to be financially stable. And again, that's a great request. But, but oftentimes, because I, of my unwillingness to trust God and to wait, I just, well, maybe if I could just get this job or maybe if I could work more overtime and this more overtime takes me away from my family and more overtime takes me away from my church. Do you hear me this morning? And I have this desire, again, nothing wrong with that request. I have this thing that, that, that I want to see happen, but, but yet I chase it in the wrong way. And in my own strength, all I do is I have these legitimate needs that are met in an illegitimate way. I find myself being part of conversations that maybe I shouldn't be part of. I find myself being posting things that maybe I shouldn't post. Whatever the need may be in my life, they're real things. So James is not saying, listen, James is showing us, he said, the issue is not the request. There's nothing long, wrong with the request that we have. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I, I want to be financially stable. But am I willing to trust God with that 10% in my life so he can bless that 90? You know, I, I, want, to, I want to be a better time management in my, in my life. I want to be able to manage my calendar more. Am I willing to trust God and, and step out and maybe serve my community and, and maybe, maybe, maybe serve in my church? I, I, I want to be able to make a difference in, in my workplace. I want to be able when I, this fall when I go back to school to be able to be used by God. But, but am, I, am I willing to do it his way? That's what James is showing us. These requests. This young man that day, he had a request, a legitimate request. How do I get eternal life? How do I have a relationship? And then Jesus, so he takes us from the request. James writes about it and Jesus shows us. He points out the root of the issue. Because look at verse 17. He says, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, if you want eternal life, and keep the commandments. Now watch what Jesus is about to do. He's about to blow this guy up real quick. He's, and, the, and the young man says, oh, commandments. I can imagine. Oh, I got this, Jesus. I'm a rich young ruler. I'm well prestigious in the community. I've worked hard for everything I have. I know, the, I know the scripture. I know the commandments. Which ones should I be keeping, Jesus? 
He thinks he's about to trump Jesus. And, and Jesus says, well, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and, father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. I can imagine the young man all snap. Really? That's what you got? Look at what he says. All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Did you see his answer? Did you see it? Let me read it again. All these I have kept, what do I still lack? It's this sinful nature that's in every one of us. It's this selfish desire of what can I do to advance myself. I preached a message right before the coronavirus went crazy. Maybe the timing was a little bad, I don't know. But I, I preached a message called the myonavirus. The virus that we all have. It's this selfish sickness. It's this selfish desire. Listen, I got a test for you. I know you've heard this before. You want to see how self-centered you are. If I want to see how self-centered I am, it's a very easy test. Go to a group photo of yourself in it, and I can ask you if that group photo is a good picture or is it a not picture. And you will base your response on one thing and one thing only. Don't y'all look at me so religious like you've never done this before online. You know you've done it. You will base that how good that picture is on one thing and one thing only. And it is what? How good do? Oh, yeah. The rest of you, you need prayer because you ain't being honest today. How good do I look? My kids can be climbing all over my wife. My wife can have one of them in a chokehold trying to get them to be still. But as long as I look good, oh, baby, that's a phenomenal. We should hang that in the hallway. That's a great family picture, right? How good do I look? Here's my question for you. When is the last time you prayed a prayer that didn't start with I? When's, when's the last time have I asked God, for something, and it didn't start with I. Because, again, I'm going to talk to myself because y'all got it all together this morning. You can amen this for me. A lot of times I start my prayers off to God like this. God, I deserve this. God, God, I mean, this belongs to me. I mean, I, I know I should forgive them, but, God, they did me dirty. And, God, God I, I know I should, should let go of that, but... But, I mean, I, I, des I deserve this. I've, I've done all of the things right. I mean, I should have got that promotion. God, everybody knows I'm the best employee here. Everybody knows that, that I work the hardest. I, I should have better. My marriage, my, my marriage should look like their marriage. My kids should look like their kids. Come on, have you ever done that before? And listen, this fault that James points out in this conversation that we see with this young man, Jesus points it out that the request is not the problem, it is the root that is the problem. Again, it's not so much what happens in the spotlight that exposes our heart, but it's what happens in secret. Because you look at what Jesus does. Jesus knows what he's doing. He's talking to this young man, and Jesus, in his response, the laws that Jesus begins to refer to, and, and he lays out in front of this young man, it's all external. What must I do to get eternal life? Well, don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't kill. Honor your father and mother. Don't do this. Do this. That's what religion looks like, doesn't it? Come on, don't go here, but do go here. Don't dress like this, do dress like this. Don't, 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 don't do this, do do that. Like that's what religion looks like, and that's what Jesus was trying to get this young man open to is he had no idea what a relationship with Christ looked like. He was following a religious code. And oh, aren't we good at following a code in our life? We can check the box. Jesus was trying to get this young man to see something. And I think James, what James is writing is to, is to open our eyes to see something. Is that a lot of us live in corporate authority. Not many of us live in kingdom authority. Or a lot of us, we can check the box and say, I'm successful here. A lot of us, we can check the box and say, I, I know how to say it right here. Kingdom, our corporate authority is just about how can I advance myself. And hear me again this morning. I have desires in my life. I have requests that, that I want in my life. But a lot of times if I'm not careful, that corporate authority is how, how do I advance my kingdom? And that's what the young man was asking. He, he was asking, how can I make myself look better? 
How, how can I have? Yeah, I've got all this other stuff, but, but there's still something else. How, how do I get that? But kingdom authority says it's not about what you can get, but what you can give. The kingdom authority is not about how can you make yourself look good, but how do I make Jesus Christ look good? Kingdom authority is not about how do I hold on to something, but how do I let go? How do I forgive those that have offended me? How do I love those that seem unlovable? How do I ask for forgiveness when I've been wrong? That's kingdom authority. And look, he, 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 Jesus hits him at the heart of the issue. Again, consider the source of, of what Jesus is saying. He looks at him. And then there's the response. This young man comes with a request. How do I have eternal life? Jesus sees right through him and says, some things wrong here. He says, if you want to be perfect, he knows what the young man was striving for. If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Verse 22 says, when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. I think this young man had a great opportunity to encounter Exactly everything he was looking for, but I wrote it down in my notes like this. He was more hungry for superiority than he missed out on meeting his Savior. He, he, was, he was more hungry for how do I establish myself more in the community than he missed out on the Christ that was standing in front of him. And again, I, I know, I, I read the story and I say, why would Jesus, how could God, how could Jesus even ask a question like that to that young man. I mean, doesn't he know how hard this young man has worked? Doesn't, doesn't he realize how much this young man would sacrifice? Doesn't, doesn't he, he know like, how, how prestigious this young I mean, if this young man, if Jesus would have got this young man saved and committed to the kingdom, can you imagine, can you imagine the change that could have happened in this world? And Jesus is looking at this young man, and I think what he was trying to do to get his attention, I think what James is showing us in our text, I think what Jesus is showing us in our text is, listen, that what we have is not really ours to start with. Pastor Phil just said it earlier when, when we were talking about the family. He said, listen, we are just stewards of everything that we have in our life anyways. So when it comes to the financial blessings that I have, it's not mine to keep. It's just mine just to channel through. When it comes to the blessings that God puts on my family, when it comes to the promotions that God gives me in my life, when it comes to the joy, the joy is not just for me to keep and hold on to, but it's how do I pass it on. The peace of God that is in my life is not just for me to hold on to, but how do I Pass it on. Saying, listen, you got to consider the source in your life. Now listen, you desire some great things. There are some requests that every one of us have. And we go to God and we say, but God, if I could just have this. And James says, you're asking, but you're asking with the wrong motives. You're asking so you can elevate yourself. You're asking so you can elevate your family. You're asking so you can elevate yourself in your corporation. You're asking so you can elevate yourself, student, on that campus. He says, when you go to God, you've got to consider the source. And this young man that day, Jesus gets right in his driveway, my why, when he starts talking to his heart. That day, Jesus gets right in his driveway the same way the Holy Spirit might be in ours right now. And he says, what about your motives? What about what's on the inside? James writes, and I think if we stopped there, he says, why do you fight? Why do you quarrel? It's because of this battle. It's this desire. He said, you ask, and you don't ask with the right motives. And we see this young man had this encounter, and if we stopped there, it would be a, a tragic ending. But James gives us the answer. James has us consider the source, and he gives us the, I thought about titling this message, the antidote to my ego, because <laughs> that's what I need. James gives us the antidote. You can't stop. You got to go on to verse 6 and look at what the antidote is. 
Again, look, look at the context. He says, listen, why do you fight? Why do you quarrel? He says, it's because, because you want you don't know how to get it, and so, so you kill, and you, and you have all of this fighting going on because, because you're just envious of other people. And But look, but he gives us more grace. Thank God for that. Thank God that he doesn't write me off when I get it wrong. Thank God when my heart is not correct that Jesus doesn't just toss me off to the side, but the Holy Spirit comes and corrects me. Thank God that my wife hasn't threw me to a side right when I've got it wrong. Thank God, you know, that, that people in my life did not write me off. But thank God that my Heavenly Father looks at me and says, listen, I know you're jacked up. I know you got issues. But thank God that Jesus Christ shed his blood for my sins. He shed his blood for that brokenness in my life. And he gives me more grace. That he doesn't run out. That there is no end. He, but he gives us more grace. This is what the scripture says. God opposes the proud. Come on, you ever been around some proudful people? You ever been proud for yourself? He opposes the proud but shows favor to the circle that humble. Circle this word, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This proper response that James shows us, we see the response of the young man in Matthew chapter 19. James points this out. He says, listen, you have these requests. There are these desires inside of you and in your own, in your own selfish nature. He said that the, the issues that we experience, it's, it's because the root, it's because the source is off. But he says, when you come to God, and he quotes Proverbs 3 and 34, it's this highlight of God's opposition to proud people. And he, and he says, but if you come to him, and, and, and it's this picture of humbly submitting ourselves. And oh, let's be honest, we don't like that. That, that word humble, it, mean, it means that we're not proud. It means we're modest. We're, we're not arrogant. That word submit, it means to give over to or yield to the power. What James is showing us is that God calls us as Christ followers. Or maybe you're here today and you're checking Jesus out and you clicked online and you've never surrendered your life to God. Listen, I'm glad that God, he calls me to submit. He never, call, he never told me he would subdue me. There's a big difference. A lot of people think that our Heavenly Father is about subduing people. Our Heavenly Father is about browbeating people. And our Heavenly Father is about making you do something. Listen, he has the power that at any moment, he can make me do whatever he wants me to do. At any moment, he can snap his fingers and my heart would stop beating. But he doesn't subdue me. He doesn't overpower me. He doesn't use this emotional and mental control. That's what it means to subdue someone. He doesn't persuade me. But yet my heavenly father, he says, when I come to him, right, and my, even though uh, my source is wrong, even though the root of my life is distorted, he said, when I come, James Wright, and he says, and I humble myself. I, I'm not proud. I'm not arrogant. God, I know I got issues. God, I know my marriage isn't perfect. God, I know I'm not the best dad, but I come and I humble myself and I submit myself to his authority. Listen, he says, when I come to him, and what that is, it's this idea that I recognize my weakness and I understand his strength in my life. It's the antidote to my ego. It's this moment in my life. Come on, Lindsay. Where I constantly come to myself. And listen, it's not a one-time prayer. That's why the Word of God it says that, that daily I present myself as a living sacrifice. It's a lot harder to do than to just read it in the Bible, ain't it? It's a lot harder to walk that out than to just read it on a page that I daily come every morning before I go into that job and I say, God, I'm, I'm going to the corporate world today. So, God, today I humbly come to you and, God, I submit myself. As I walk into that job. God, today I want to be a dad. God, today I want to be a, a mom. God, today I want to be a husband and, and, and a wife. And God, I know my ego can get in the way. I have desires. I have these requests. But God, I, I know what's on the inside. I, I know what's there that likes to creep up. That's what James is saying. He said it creeps up sometimes. But God, I come to you and I, I surrender myself to you. Do you notice the difference? James, James isn't showing us how to suppress it. 
Religion, that's what religion will make us feel like. You just got to suppress. You just got to keep it beat down. You just got to keep pressing it down. James like, no, no, no. Jesus didn't die on the cross to suppress your sin. He died on the cross to squash your sin. He died on the cross to defeat that ego. He died on the cross to defeat that flesh desire in my life. So I present myself daily as a sacrifice. Humbly, God, I come to you. So God, when I come and I'm, I'm asking, God, my ego tries to, tries to well up. My, my, my heart, the source can be, can be stained and so it tries to creep up. But God, I, I want what you want for my life. I want what you want for my marriage, God. I want what you want for my city. So God, I come to you. And I, I submit myself. God, I humbly submit myself. When's the last time your ego tried to creep up in your life? Well, what is it in this place this morning? What is it at Wanata, at North Judson, at Westfield, MPH? You're watching online. What, what is it this morning you, you've clicked on or you've walked in and you've got these requests? They're, they're legitimate requests, but you've been trying to meet it in an illegitimate way. Come on, right where you sit. Come on, can you bow your heads? At North Judson, at Wanatal, I want you to bow your heads in a minute. I'm going to ask them to come up, but stay with me for a second right where you're at. Online, you're with our campus host. I want you to bow your heads. And come on, what is it in your life? I know that there's requests in this place. There's desires in this place that God put there for a reason. But come on, if we're honest, we find ourselves trying to meet it in an illegitimate way. We're trying to fill it ourselves. Some of you, you don't. You have this God-sized void, and you don't have a relationship with Christ, and you think you're going to the world, and you think you can fill it. But listen, it's an illegitimate way to fill that need, and God just wants you to come and surrender your life, your life to him. Some of you, again, maybe you're a Christ follower, and you've been in the game for a minute, but yet you find yourself, you find this battle. Come on, right where you sit, can you just throw both hands up to God? And come on, can you let the Holy Spirit search you right where you sit? Come on, at Wanata at North Judson, right before they come. Can you just throw your hands up? Holy Spirit, search my heart. Come on, pray. You begin to pray to God right where you're at. Holy Spirit, search my heart. God, I have these requests. God, I have these desires. Lord, they're from you. Lord, they're good things. God, they're godly. Some of them are godly things. But God, I surrender to you today. God, humbly I come. I don't have all the answers. God, humbly I come. Lord, I'm putting my ego in check. Holy Spirit, we need you. God, we need you in this place. Now, come on, for 90 seconds. Come on, can you just begin to talk to God? Holy Spirit, we need you. God, we humbly come to you today. God, we submit ourselves to you today. God, we have these requests. We have these desires. But God, check our source. Holy Spirit, check our source. Check my motives this morning. God, I, Lord, deal with the root issue in my life. God, deal with the root issue in our country. God, deal with the root issue, God, in our families. God, in our city. God, in our church. God, Holy Spirit, you begin to point those things out. Come on, right where you sit. Holy Spirit, come on, the campus leaders are coming. Holy Spirit, God, thank you for grace. God, thank you that you don't give up on us. God, thank you that you don't throw us to the side. But Lord, you are moving. God, we're presenting ourselves to you and you are moving. Now, come on, can you stand right there with your hands raised? Come on, and begin to declare this in your life, this song. Come on, begin to thank God for his grace. Begin to thank the Holy Spirit that he's checking my source this morning. God, you're adjusting my source this morning. God, you're adjusting those things. God, we thank you for it. Come on, with your hands raised, God, we thank you for it today. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. God, thank you, Lord, for desires that are aligning with yours. Thank you for the will of God that, Lord, I'm putting in my life. God, thank you that you're restoring marriages. Thank you, God, that you're blessing families. God, you're bringing financial freedom. God, you're bringing joy. God, you're bringing peace. God, forgiveness today. God, not so we can hold it, but God, so we can pass it on. God, so we can be kingdom builders, God, in you. Now come on, sing it one time. Our God, He's in control. Come on, say it with us. Come on, declare that. Come on, He's in control today. Yes, He does. Thank you for your word today, God. 
Come on, you glad of that? My God is still. Come on, can you give God a big hand clap of praise today? Come on, thank you for his word today. Thank you for his word. Wow. Wow. How many, how many is glad that we got a Savior that crushes, crushes our sin? He doesn't compress it. Come on. That was a powerful word right there. He crushes it. He crushes that depression in your life. He doesn't just compress it. Some of you are still battling that. Some of you are still trying to navigate through all this craziness. And you're, you know, you have good days and bad days. What you've got to understand today, Christ wants to lead you into triumph. He wants to lead you into victory. He wants to crush those things in your life that prevent you from being everything he's called you to be. I don't know about you, but I want my big ass prayers to be submissive to him, don't you? I don't want to ask amiss. I don't want to ask just to consume upon my own lust. I want to ask according to his will, according to his word, and guess what? When you pray according to his will and word, what happens? Come on, what happened? It gets done. Come on, say with me, it gets done. It gets done, amen. Wow, come on, give the Lord another good hand. That's a great word. I love it. Hey, John. We, we, do we have a Father's Day winner today? Come on. We Father's do. Day. We do, Pastor. I know that our North Judson and our Wanatow campuses have announced their winners. Here at our Valpo campus and online, we did a drawing. And the winner of our Father's Day Home Depot gift card and entry into our V-Rod goes to Josh Henderson. Josh, Josh Henderson, you are the uh, winner. Uh. Uh, meet me at the at the guest services booth right next to the sound booth, and I'd love to give you your prize. Happy Father's Day, Josh. Can you ride a motorcycle? Huh? Well, you may have to take a lesson if you win it. Amen. Come on, let me pray. Father, thank you for this week, Lord. We just pray this week, God, that you give us opportunity to be light that shines and to be salt this season. And God, I thank you that you're helping us get our prayer life in line with your word so that when we ask we're going to receive and we thank you for that let your goodness and your mercy be upon all of us god as we go out and as we come in in jesus name amen love you hey you be blessed we'll see you next sunday god bless you